As expected, the U.S. Federal Reserve held its key rate steady at 5.5%. Joining us now for his reaction is Scott Colburn of TD Asset Management. And Scott, uh, the Fed seemed to make an important pivot today. Uh, they highlighted a more equal focus on both inflation and jobs. So my question to you is, has your baseline scenario on a possible rate cut in September changed? No. I mean, we and the market primarily have expected the Fed uh, to cut in September. And today's you know, statement and press conference basically has you know, given the Fed the, the, the optionality across all of its data to, uh, to, to cut in September. So it, it highlighted that you know, the jobs market has moderated and inflation has you know, come down, it's cooled, but it's still somewhat elevated. So I think on the balance, uh, you know, the changes in the first two paragraphs of its, uh, of its statement give it uh, scope uh, to, to cut rates in September. Okay, now, there's signs that inflation is moderating. We're seeing improved consumer confidence. The labor market is getting closer to neutral. Is this consistent with a soft landing? Yeah, I, you know, the credit market, the equity market, fixed income, uh, you know, on balance, I would say that uh, market participants and the Fed continue to see evidence that this is a softer landing. Everything has come in closer to uh, neutral, if you will. And given the stance of monetary policy, which by many measures, including you know, the Fed suggesting as much, that is tight, very tight, that we, you know, we need to start moderating that uh, tight monetary policy, given the trajectory on both growth and inflation. Okay, now what is the bond market telling us about the path forward and timing of interest rates, potential interest rate cuts this year? Today's uh, you know, decision really didn't move the needle too much um, in terms of what's priced in. Uh, between now and the end of the year, there's roughly about two and a half cuts priced in. So obviously a little bit of optionality and uncertainty in the markets. But basically September is fully priced in and December is priced in for two cuts, uh, 50 basis points. We saw a little bit of you know, bouncing around after the announcement uh, in, the, in the capital markets. Uh, but by and large, you know, uh, the markets uh, expect the, you know, the Fed to, uh, to cut. And so really, 10-year rates are a little bit lower. Um, you know, the, the foreign exchange market saw a little bit of weakness in the U.S. dollar, and the equity markets uh, were up on, on balance. And so no real substantive market reaction post-announcement. Uh, post okay, I'll get to the U.S. dollar in just a moment, yeah, but yeah. Uh, we do have the U.S. elections coming up. And um, any implications to the shifting U.S. political landscape on Fed policy going forward? Well, obviously, there's been a big change in terms of the, the political landscape uh, with Biden out now. And I, I you know, you've the markets have focused on the Trump trade, which is tariffs, uh, the desire for a weak U.S. dollar. Um, you know, I think we're not completely clear on what, uh, you know, the Democrats will lay out uh, going forward. So there's, there's a heightened degree of uncertainty. Um, there's going to be more information, or, you know, between now and obviously the election. But for the, on, on balance right now, you know, the markets are really focusing on uh, what they know. And I would say in the, in the shorter term, there's a lot of other uh, factors like uh, like the Fed that is, you know, driving the, the markets at the moment. Okay, we'll get back to currency now. Uh, given your outlook on rates, what's your outlook for the U.S. dollar going forward? Well, I, you know, on balance, I think this doesn't really move the needle too much. It's you're, you've got a cautious Fed that is slowly going to be uh, looking to you know reduce its uh, uh, you know uh, tightness in in terms of monetary policy. Um, it's not a real pushback against the U.S. dollar, but I would think that on balance. Uh, you know, over the course of the next year, given the, the direction in terms of monetary policy, that you'll start to see a, a slight weakening in the U.S. dollar. But this doesn't really move the needle substanti substantially for a, a massive weakening in the U.S. dollar. Okay, so now looking ahead, what will you be watching closely in the next few months that could potentially change your view on rates? Fed is telling <laughs> us data dependent, data dependent, data dependent. I, you know, there's obviously, there's a non-farm payrolls this week. That's, that's one indicator. We'll have more jobs and uh, inflation data between uh, now and September. We also have Jackson Hole, and I think that's another signpost along the way that the Fed can nudge the markets, uh, you know, depending on what uh, data come out. And if things are just basically on track, uh, you know, the Fed will be comfortable moving in September, but it'll give it a scope to adjust to the, the, the uh, you know, Jackson Hole will give it scope to adjust uh, given the data. Scott, thanks again for joining us. My pleasure. Thanks, Anthony. Thank you.